Thanks for the support as your channel member, Justin Parsons. Folks, this is potentially going to be an unusual and confusing season. DC United Academy are already the runaway leaders at the top of League One. But DC United are in the championship, the league above, and are not currently in a promotion position. So we could find ourselves in a situation where we could go up automatically without having to finish in the top two, I think. Hello, welcome to part 103 of Born in the USA. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in the league. We're at home against Pittsburgh and the Salt Lake City Monarchs, one of two Salt Lake City teams currently in the relegation zone. They should probably just get together and maybe produce one good team rather than two not very good teams. I've just noticed as well, we're actually playing the two teams uh, bottom and second bottom of the league. So it should be a couple of wins coming up today as well, which would be very nice, especially because we've had a little bit of a sticky run going into uh, going into this match. You can see we lost to San Diego, a couple of draws against DC United Academy and Chicago Academy. They're both very good sides. Um, and then we thumped uh, the Loudoun, uh, Loudoun United. Uh, so the league table looks like this. This is what we've got. So Chicago and DC United are the two teams we drew with. San Diego are the one we lost to, which I guess is the most disappointing of the run. But as I was saying in the intro, DC United Academy, as you can see, 20 points, undefeated so far. They are looking very good. But if you look at the season preview, you'll see that both DC United Academy and Loudoun United are not applicable for odds for promotion because as it stands, they can't get promoted. Because if we go up to the championship, you'll see that their parent club, DC United, are here in the championship, having got relegated from the Premier League last year. Now, they are third. There's every chance they do go up. And I assume if they go up, then DC United Academy will be allowed to go up too. I wonder if they were automatically relegated through... Yeah, so they've... In fact, they finished first in this league last year, but weren't allowed to go up. So if we go back to last season, yeah, so DC United go up as champions. Now that's interesting, the way the promotions... Are. Oh, so Loudoun United couldn't go up either. I was thinking two teams from the playoffs went up. But no, what's actually happened is DC United and Loudoun United aren't able to get promoted because DC United got relegated to the championship. So presumably Madison in fourth place have gone up automatically. I wonder if Loudoun United were in the playoffs. How does the playoffs work? So the playoff semi-finals, no. So it was Madison, New York City Academy, Charlotte and Sacramento in the playoffs. So, yeah, that goes all the way down to... Hold on, Sacramento, where on earth are they? Is that a team from the division above? Sacramento was 17th... In the championship, why were they in the playoff? I don't understand. Did they win it? Um, if we go through to the playoff final. So Sacramento won the playoff final. Oh no, Sacramento were there. Ignore me. I don't know how I... ignore. So there was two Sacramento teams, apparently. Both called Sacramento. You can see where the confusion comes from. So hold on. Are we back to the we're back to this season? We are back to this season. That's why I'm confused. So Sacramento were there. Well, bottom line, this could be quite interesting if DC United don't go up again. The joys of having all these feeder teams. I've got myself very confused there. Let's go and play Pittsburgh. This is the team we're going to be sending there. Um, I think I've made a couple more signings since the last episode as well. There was a couple more players who came in, um, or maybe one more. I think you saw all the loans. Taylor Hoffman um, is the one that you won't be familiar with. Taylor Hoffman's a 26-year-old American central midfielder, three-star current ability, who has been playing for Detroit City for a gazillion years. Lots of experience in League Two. One season in League One previously, which presumably was a relegation season, but we needed a, an extra body in midfield and now, now we have one. So there he is in central midfield. Now, the problem we've got is we don't have a goalkeeper for this game. Probably could have led with that. Um, Johnny Walker. <laughs> Johnny Walker with his torn back muscle. We knew about that. 
What we didn't expect to happen is Victor Garcia to be called up for international duty and us to have no other goalkeepers at the club. So he's off playing with the US under-20 side. I feel like in reality, he gets released from that international duty. Um, Takada's away for internationals as well. But we don't have another goalkeeper anywhere at the club, which is a little bit of an oversight. Solon Thomas is out on loan. Can we record? We can recall him. I probably should have. I mean, he's not going to be registered, though. Right. We've recalled him. He's not going to be able to play today, I don't think, because he won't have come back yet. No. So we're going to have to play a grade out goalkeeper today. But if, um, if what's his face, Garcia is still unavailable for the second match, then we might be able to play Thomas. But we're playing against a team in the relegation zone without a goalkeeper. So we have to use a grade out one. Harry Walsh. There he is. Look, what a superstar. We're in League One playing grade out players. Walsh in goal. A back four of Mitchell, Baron, Glover and Gutierrez. Hoffman and Gentry in midfield. Rodriguez and Robinson outright. And Davies and Wright up front. We are definitely just going to have to go down the route of trying to outscore our opponents here. I know it's often our game plan anyway, but we don't really have much of a choice today because grade out goalkeepers at this level, I would suggest, probably aren't going to be that effective. I thought the ball was already in the back of the net. I thought we were just giving them a one goal head start. Oh, we effectively have. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well... The two rock bottom teams in the league are getting a little bit of a boost here by getting to play against us without a goalkeeper. Oh, we got a, he got fingertips to it as well. Come on, boys. We've got to go and score a goal. They're just going to shoot again from here. They should just shoot every time they get an opportunity to. Why wouldn't you? How bad is this grayed out goalkeeper likely to be? This is what we're going to be learning today. Would we have been better off playing an outfield player in goal? Maybe. Oh no, just get the ball clear. Get the Oh, there you go. See, the ball was going towards goal and he didn't let it in. So that's an advantage. Wright has done brilliantly here. What a run from Wright. What a goal from Tristan Wright. Goodness me, you've got no right to score. Puns. You've got no right to score a goal like that. Look at the state of this. It's lovely. Um, Lovely centre forward play from Davies, but Wright picks it up in the centre circle, turns the defenders inside out. Looks like he's maybe run it a little bit too wide to try and round the goalkeeper as well, but scores from a very tight angle to make it 1-1. And there you go. We've cancelled out goalkeeping incompetence with a piece of individual brilliance. And now we need more of that. We've got to outscore them. So keep doing, keep doing that, boys. Don't let the ball come up the other end. They've had three shots on target. That means Walsh has made two saves. I'm quite proud of him making two saves. He might be my new first choice goalkeeper. Let's let's see how he gets on here. So, ball comes into the area. Baron heads clear. Lovely stuff. And they should just be shooting on sight. And they do. And they score again. Because that's exactly how they should be playing it today. Just shoot from anywhere and everywhere. Because we don't have a goalkeeper. How have we let this happen? I don't think Thomas is going to be able to play in the next game either if Garcia's not back because he won't be registered. I don't know if the fact that he's 18 means he doesn't have to be registered. I can't remember the registration rules. They've never really come up before. But I do I do feel like this, this is a bit of a problem. A great opportunity to show the pundits whatever we were showing them. I didn't read the rest of it. We're going to go attacking. We're going to demand more. And Hoffman's got a free kick. It's a big in-swing into that far post. There's a foul there. That's a penalty. And we have got a penalty. I don't know who's taking it. Who is that? It's Wright. Tristan Wright to take the penalty. And he scores 2-2 two -two now. Remember, we are the home team. You wouldn't know it from the way that we're constantly chasing the game. But an eighth goal of the season for Wright. And we just we need to score a goal when we're not behind. If we can somehow come away with a victory here, it does show poor old just how bad poor old Pittsburgh are. Corner, looking for Barron, but can't find him. Davies lurking on the edge of the area, though. Picks the ball up, gives it back to Wright. We've got no strikers in the area at the moment. I think Davies has wandered in. Now Robinson has also entered the penalty area, but his header 
is uh, is saved by the goalkeeper, which, frankly, I think goalkeeper's saving is cheating today. Lovely stuff from Walsh. Dominant goalkeeping. He set up a counter-attack that Robinson couldn't capitalise on. I think it was probably a dropped attempt at a catch, but it did. It, I mean, it was good. It was a punch. I loved it. Oh, can we do some more of that, please? Why are they not just shooting? I don't understand why they're not just shooting. It makes no sense. And there you go. Rodrigo spins the ball back. Um, Gentry, Wright's managed to get himself clear here. Tristan Wright, again, oh my word, their goalkeeper looks as bad as ours. It's kind of hit him and careered off at a weird angle into the crossbar, but not into the back of the net. And we need another goal. Half an hour still to go. We can't afford to be dropping points in games like this. I know, we've, I know we're effectively playing without a goalkeeper, but you can't play two home games against the two worst teams in the division and not win and still expect to get promoted. And I would still like to be promoted, especially with the DC United revelation and the fact that we might not even need to finish in that top three. I mean, the fourth place team last year went up automatically. Wright was in again there, but it's saved once again. And now we've got a corner. 29 minutes left on the clock. It's right to take the corner and it finds Baron in his header is rubbish. What a what a terrible header. And the highlight ends. Right, Davies is tiring, so we can make a couple of substitutions here. Is McJanet really the best option to come on? We've got Kevin Johnson sat down there on the bench. You play as a false nine, Kev. No, you can play as a poacher. You know what? We might go poacher and advance forward and get Johnson on with right. If we can get those two working together, that would be... A great moment in the history of this football club. McJanet can come on on the left-hand side where he can play as an inside forward as well. And we've got 20 minutes to find another goal. And bringing on two strikers is a good way to go about trying to get that. Lindley coming on in midfield is definitely an attacking change as well. Although it does leave us a little bit more vulnerable to shots from, from Pittsburgh ending up in the back of the net because we don't have a keeper. Right, we pick the ball up at the back. It's with Gutierrez. And now Baron playing it forward. I think he's looking for right. It was actually nearer to McJanet and ultimately didn't find either of them. But it's back with Baron again. He can have another go. This time decides to go for Mitchell. And now Lindley dropping deep where we know he can ping those balls over the top. But this time he plays it back to Baron and we try to knock it around like a proper football team. And Robinson is in and he's scored a seventh goal of the season for him, which is very prolific from that right-hand side when you consider that Wright only has eight for the season and Robinson has got seven coming in off the right-hand side. But it's a very, very strong header from him again. And just really lovely football in the build-up to that goal. We worked it, we played it forward and it didn't really work. So we then got back to Baron again and decided, right, well, if we can't lump it forward and get a chance, let's carve out a chance by just passing it around them. That's what we did. And we ended up in the lead for the first time today. Now, of course, we've got 15 minutes here to try and defend that lead, which is easier said than done without a goalkeeper. So we can't go to any kind of defensive system because that just invites shots. But at the same time, we don't want to attack too much because... That, cre that creates gaps at the back. Really, I would just like to add another couple of goals so we can have a little bit of breathing space. But I think that's probably wishful thinking. And it is Pittsburgh who are camped out in our half now. And they're in on goal here. And of course, Walsh was never going to save it. It's really poor that we've allowed that chance to happen. It's an immediate reply from Pittsburgh. And it's just really sloppy defending from us. Who is that just there? That's Baron, isn't it? Our captain... It's just let his marker go past him. And poor old Walsh, he's gone for it with his knee, as you do as a goalkeeper, and not able to make the save. It's 3-3 three, three now. And this, even with, even with the handicap of having no goalkeeper, it does feel like drop points. It's a missed opportunity. And now we need to know if we can register Thomas for the second of these two games. Or if Garcia's back, how long does he need to be away on international duty for? Like I say, in real life, I'm fairly confident he would be released from under-20s duty. I think that actually confirmed he would be back. Thomas is back in as well. Um, we'll register him or try to register him just in case. Can we... Can we register him? No, we can't. 
So we've pulled him back from his loan and he can't play anyway. <laughs> oh, I see. We signed him two years ago and he's still only 18. Does this boy not age? Well, let's just hope that Garcia's back for the next game. Worried up, boys and girls. Garcia is back. Um, Johnny Walker's actually fit enough to be on the bench as well, even though he's potentially four weeks away from uh, from being back in full training, but he can sit on the bench. So we now have two goalkeepers. So let's make up for what happened in that previous game and go and uh, go and take it out on the Salt Lake City Monarchs. We must win this one. It's only what was what is that now? One win in our previous five games. It's not exactly promotion form, is it? Not that we need promotion this year. You know how the how the system has worked throughout this series. We get promoted, we consolidate for a year, then we get promoted again. So this is officially only our consolidation year, but I can't help but get away from the feeling that we are a very, very good side who are good enough to go straight up. And it's I've not felt that way before, but this is this is a very, very strong team that we've put together here now. And I do worry that if we hang around in this league for that extra year, we run the risk of the financial problems resurfacing because there's there's not prize money, there's not TV money. We don't have a big enough ground to to support the amount of money that we're spending on players. And my worry is if we're still in this league next year, we could end up in a situation where we're having to reduce the amount of money that we're paying and potentially going to next year with a weaker side than the one that we've got this year, which obviously makes it harder to get promoted. So let's try and get promoted this year, shall we, boys? Right, we've got a corner, I think. We do have a corner. Um, <laughs> right just appeared out of nowhere with the in-swinger. And I think that's Hoffman whose header comes back off the crossbar, or it might have been saved by the goalkeeper, but either way, it's our first big chance of the game. But as we run towards half time it's really been the only chance of the game in this first half where is it where is all the goals that we were scoring in the last game Baron now from the header and his header is just over two corners two set pieces is all we've been able to do to create chances in this game against a team that started the episode second bottom you saw how good our passing can be in that last game we should be creating chances. Rodriguez hits the post and then somehow hits the goalkeeper from the follow-up. They were two absolute guilt-edged opportunities there, but he can't find the back of the net. And now Barron with a free header inside the six-yard box somehow misses. I don't understand how we're not ahead in this football match. XG must be through the roof. 1.65 on our XG at the moment. And somehow we're not ahead. Right, with yet another corner. It's Barron again. And we've won a penalty for a handball. Maybe apparently a shove on Barron. I didn't really see it. I think it's a bit of a soft penalty. But we'll take it. We've done enough to be ahead in this game so far. So fingers crossed Wright can convert from the penalty. Of course he can. And there is the lead. Finally, with a ninth goal of the season from Tristan Wright. We have made hard work of this. But hopefully... We're not just going to go up the ending, up the other end and concede the way we were in the last game because we've got Garcia back in goal. Um, what does this do to the league situation? I'm kind of ignoring DC United Academy, although obviously their main team could still very easily get promoted. They were third in the championship, so it's not unreasonable to expect them to turn that around. But part of me does think, oh, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be fun to go up automatically in third place? It'd just be a, a nice thing to to make note of as well uh, along the way through. A little bit of a unique situation we're never likely to come across again. I can't imagine I'm ever going to manage on a US database like this one again. It's been fun this year, but it's not something that I feel the need to go through and do a second time. So I don't see that I'm ever going to get another opportunity to get promoted on a technicality. It's like it's pure backdoor Kev, and that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. So as it stands right now, we're three points behind Omaha, six behind DC United Academy. But we don't care what they're doing because we want them to we want them to win the league but not be able to go up. Because we'll all chuckle so much. <laughs> and let's face it, they won the league last year. They're going to win it again this year. They're clearly very, very good. We've just got to hope that we benefit from it the way whoever that team was that finished fourth last year did. Davies is in here. He's tried to square it rather than just have a go himself. Hopefully... 
we don't end up conceding immediately and that costing us. But that felt like another big, big opportunity and some poor decision making from Davies, who was phenomenal in that first game where I decided to change the system to fit a false nine in. I have to admit, he's not really done very much since then. We saw that nice header to play right through in the last game, but Davies does need to start contributing a little bit more if we're going to stay with him and not put Robinson back up front or find a way to squeeze Kevin Johnson into the mix up there. he's uh, He's got to be better than this for me to carry on using this fancy system. But a 2-0 win, it's what we should have done in the first game, but it is a win, a win is a win, and fingers crossed allows us to get a little bit of a run going. Now, my worry now, of course, is that there's going to be more occasions where Garcia is away on international duty, although I guess by the time it happens again, theoretically Johnny Walker should be fit and able to come back into the team again. I'm glad we've got two goalkeepers this time round. Right, let's find where we're going to be in the next episode. It's going to be somewhere around here. I'll pick out some interesting games. We're probably not going to feature the cup run particularly prominently unless we go deep in it. It's all about the league this year, so we'll find out what we're going to do in the next episode and um, hopefully be in better form than this when we head into it. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.